In order to program in System 370 assembler language, you need to know how the computer represents data. That involves learning the binary and hexadecimal numbering systems. In this video, we'll take a look at those two numbering systems along with decimal. We'll see how to convert values from one system to another. And we'll look at how you can do arithmetic in hexadecimal. Let's start with the decimal numbering system. It uses two techniques to express value. It uses symbols, 10 of them. And it uses positional notation. The position of the symbol in the number determines the value. The positions are linked to the powers of 10. Symbols in different positions have different values. One in the first position means one. It's one times 10 to the zero power. One in the second position means 10. One times 10 to the first power. And one in the third position means 100. One times 10 to the second power. You'll also see how binary and hexadecimal use these components. In decimal, we prefer 10 digits, 10 symbols. That might have something to do with an anatomical quirk. But computers keep it simple. They use two symbols, 0 and 1, a binary number system. The lights you sometimes see on CPUs are examples of binary, on or off, one or zero. Like the decimal system, the binary number system uses positions and powers. The first position on the right is for two to the zero power, or one. The second position is for two to the first power, or two. The third is for two to the second power, or four. And the fourth is for two to the third power, or eight, and so on. So the binary number 0101 has a value of one times two to the zero power, or one, plus zero times two to the first, or zero, plus one times two to the second, or four, plus 0 times 2 to the third. The sum, 5. Manually converting a binary number to decimal, then, is a process of adding up the value of each binary digit in the number. Let's look at another example. You take 1 times 1, plus 1 times 2, plus 1 times 4, plus 1 times 8. The sum, 15. Here are the binary equivalents of the decimal values 0 through 15. And here's 16, the smallest number that requires more than 4 bits. You can see how working in binary can get cumbersome. And here's 255 the largest number that you can represent with 8 bits. 8 bits isn't too bad, but it's still only one byte. What if you had a memory dump as large as 500 binary characters? Hexadecimal makes binary more manageable. The hexadecimal number system uses 16 different symbols instead of 2 or 10. Hexadecimal symbols run from 0 to 9 and then continue with A. A represents the decimal value 10. The highest hexadecimal symbol is F. F represents decimal 15. The hexadecimal system also uses positional notation. The first position is for 16 to the zero power, or one. The second is for 16 to the first power, or 16. The third is for 16 to the second power, or 256. Let's look at the hexadecimal number 201. It starts with 1 times 16 to the 0, or 1 times 1, or 1. 
The second position is 0 times 16 to the first, or 0 times 16, or 0. The third position is 2 times 16 to the second, or 2 times 256, or 512. The total of all three positions is 513. You can convert from hexadecimal to decimal, then, by using the same technique you used for binary. Take each digit and multiply times the power of the base. Then add up the decimal values of all of the digits. You'll generally use printed tables to convert from hexadecimal to decimal and for converting from decimal to hexadecimal. We said that hexadecimal will be your shorthand for binary. Here's how binary and hexadecimal relate. If you have a group of binary digits that represent a single value, you'll put the binary digits into groups of four bits. Each possible combination of four bits has one equivalent hexadecimal representation, from 0 to 1 to 2, all the way up to E and F, or decimal 14 and 15. You'll need to memorize these 16 equivalents in order to quickly convert binary to and from hexadecimal. You'll see hexadecimal numbers in memory dumps. Sometimes you'll be adding and subtracting numbers in hexadecimal without converting to decimal. Our hexadecimal shorthand allows us to do that. Actually, we have already been doing addition in hexadecimal. Counting is just adding one to each number in succession. F plus 1 gives us 1, 0, or decimal 16. Adding by 2 works the same way. For example, when we add E plus 2, we carry 1 and put 0 on the right. Decimal 16 again. Here's an example of hexadecimal addition. We'll add F, A, 3, and 1, 3, 7. 3 plus 7 is 10, or A. Notice there is no need to carry a 1. There is a single symbol in hexadecimal for 10. Next, we add A plus 3. In decimal, that's 10 plus 3, or 13, which is a D in hexadecimal. Finally, we add F plus 1 and get 1, 0. Here we carry the 1, since we used our highest symbol, F. Subtraction follows the same rules as subtraction in decimal. From the number F2B, let's subtract the hexadecimal number A1C. To start, we can't subtract C from B. We borrow 16 from the digit on the left and add it to the B, or 11. This gives us 27. Now we can subtract C, or 12, and our result is 15, or a hexadecimal, F. Next, we subtract 1 from 1 and get 0. We subtract A, or 10, from F, or 15, and get 5. The answer is 5, 0, F in hexadecimal. Notice that in hexadecimal, the amount that we borrow is 16. It's a general rule that you borrow the amount of the base. You've seen how three numbering systems are related and how to convert from one to another. For the rest of this video, let's look at how the System 370 actually formats data and numbers internally. Three data formats are represented in object code. These are binary, packed decimal, and zoned decimal. Sometimes, for speed, arithmetic is done in binary format. Binary format is made up of a fixed length, either 16 bits, as shown by the positional notation 0 to 15, or 32 bits, or 64 bits. These are 2, 4, or 8 bytes long. Binary values are generally represented in hexadecimal, and they must be interpreted because these hexadecimal characters don't always represent numerical values. When a System 370 processor does decimal arithmetic, it requires that the numbers are in packed decimal format.
packed numbers vary in length from 1 to 16 bytes. The digits 9C are the packed decimal value for the number positive 9. In a packed decimal number, the sign is given by the rightmost hexadecimal digit of the number. C is a positive sign. Since this is a decimal number, all the other digits in the number must not be greater than 9. Here's another packed decimal number. This number is a minus 189,743 in decimal. A D in the rightmost hexadecimal digit means that the packed number is negative. You may see an F used as a positive sign. And you should know that American National Standards Institute conventions allow the use of A as a positive sign, E as a positive sign, and B as a negative sign. The System 370 needs binary numbers and packed decimal numbers for internal arithmetic. But the numbers don't print properly on a report. In order to print numbers, the values have to be converted into zoned decimal format. In a printable zone decimal format, each number has a zone portion, which is an F in the left position. Each number also has a value from 0 to 9 in the right position. Each complete zone and digit is one byte in length. A zone decimal value can be any length up to a maximum of 256 digits. This is a typical zoned decimal number. It has the value 293. You've seen three kinds of numbering systems in this video. Decimal, binary, and hexadecimal. You've also seen how computers represent data in these different internal formats. Binary, packed decimal, and zone decimal. Please turn to mini course three in your text. Read the section titled, Another Look at Main Storage.